Thank you for the gift to be able to worship you without restrictions. Accept our thanks, Father, in Jesus' name. We commit ourselves to you, Lord, even as we come to your presence. That, Lord, we will not go back the same way in Jesus' name. Let every pound be loose in Jesus' name. Let every sick be healed in Jesus' name. Let every heart that is discouraged be encouraged and strengthened in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for you've done it. In Jesus' name, we worship. And we will say, Amen. Let's have our seat in God's presence. If you are happy to be in God's presence this morning, come and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord for another opportunity to be in his presence. This morning, the word of the Lord that is coming to us say, be encouraged. Say, be encouraged. Be encouraged. Say it to yourself, be encouraged. Amen. I know this word is coming to us because the Lord wants to encourage his people in the hour this morning. And as we look into the story of David, I pray the Lord is going to speak to us and strengthen our hearts in Jesus' name. Let's go from our Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 30. We'll be reading from verse 1 to 8. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1 to 8. If you are there, you can join as we read. If you are not there, you can just open and follow us as we read. Amen. David and his men reached Zignad on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and burned it, and had taken captive the women and everyone else in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men reached Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire, and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to be. David's two wives had been captured, Ainoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimele, bring me the ephod. Abiata brought it to him and gave it the cry of the Lord. Shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in your rescue. Amen. The story is about David. When he could no longer live in the land of Israel and became a fugitive. And in this passage, he was already given a land which he called Sigla that belonged to him with his men. The men that were with him were 600 men, with their wives, with their children. So it's like a mini town. They had like a village of people already. And on their way going about their business, at the time they came back and met it to bring them down. The Bible says, the men, the women were not there. It was the men, they wept. They didn't just weep a little. They wept with their eyes no strength. This men we are talking about, are warriors. They are fighters. Can you imagine how strong they will be? Can you imagine how big they will be? Can you imagine their muscles? The Bible says they wept, they cried. Now, when we are reading this passage, I want us to know that the previous passage, if we read it, it will give us more understanding of what got to the point why they could not even stand, they could not hold themselves. And they were crying. So it means the 600 people worried with David and David himself. There was nobody to console the other person. You know, there are times you are crying and your friend is saying, Please don't cry. Please stop crying. But in this case, we have to say, Every one of them was crying. I wonder maybe they sat on where their houses used to be, on the ashes. They would have sat on the ground and cried and cried and cried till they had no strength. Some of us could also be in this situation at a point in time. And many times now, we kind of wear a mask. Apart from the normal mask we wear, we put some, you know, we cry in our room. Sometimes it's even during work, working hours. You are so overwhelmed, you go to the restroom, you cry for a while, you wash your face, you put, you apply your powder, or as a man, you just clean your face, and you come out outside again. And if you cry so bad, your eyes will be red, and somebody is asking, 
pour out into your eyes, oh, something fell in my heart. We can't open our eyes to tell them, I cried. Some people will come and say, why is your face swollen? Oh, I didn't sleep. Meanwhile, we were crying. The same state was what happened to David and his men here. They cried to the point that they had no strength again because of what befell them. But at the end of the day, we see the Lord telling me in verse 8, He says, Go, oh, you will recover. And when we read to the end of that passage, He recovered eventually. So today, we want to see how can we be encouraged? There are times things will happen, and it seems we've come to the end of our life. It seems there is no way forward. It seems we can't move forward. But today, I want to tell us the word of the Lord that says, Be encouraged. Say to yourself again, Be encouraged. Come on, say like you mean it. Be encouraged. Call your name and say, Be encouraged. Open like you be encouraged. Amen. First Samuel chapter 29, verse 1 to 11. First Samuel 29, verse 1 to 11. We want to read the preceding passage. To see why the men cried that bad. There were some things, there, there were some events that unfolded. If you read from chapter 27, chapter 28, chapter 29, and chapter 30 of 1 Samuel. Chapter 29 of 1 Samuel says, The Philippines gathered all their forces at Aphek, and Israel camped by the spring in Jezreel. In this place, there is a war that is going on between the Israelites and the Philistines. And because David had run away from Israel, because Saul was trying to kill him, he decided to come with the Philistines. You won't believe it that David joined their army. He said, I'm going to fight against the Israel. I am no longer a part of the Israel. I'm no longer an Israelite. I renounce my citizenship. Now, I belong to the Philistines. But in that passage, and the Philistines will have marched with their units of hundreds and thousands. David and his men were marching at the rear with Akish. Akish was like a friend that David met and that took him in as part of his army. He was one of the leaders of the Philistines. So he took David in. He was one that gave him Sidlar. If you read the preceding chapters, gave him Sidlar to dwell there with his people. And then the commanders of the Philistines asked, What about these people? Akish replied, Is this not David, who was an officer of Saul, king of, Israel, Saul, king of Israel? He has already been with me for over a year. And from the day he left Saul until now, I have found no fault in him. But the Philistine commanders were angry with Akish and said, Send the man back, that he may return to the place you assigned him. He must not go with us into battle, or he will turn against us during the fighting. How better could he regain his master's favor by taking the head of our own men? Isn't it the David is snag about in their darkness? Can you imagine? Even the Philistines know the CV of this man. They know the story of this man. Even if you want to hide, you cannot hide. Because we heard of him. We heard about him. How they snag about him. They said, Saul has slain his thousands, and David is ten thousands. And that's when they said, Sorry, Mr. David. You can't go with us to battle, even though you want to go with us to battle. How many of us have got it to the point that we turned our back against God? We turn, turned our back against His church. We turned our back against His purpose and plan for us. And we just want to go as far into the world as we can. But the mercy of the Lord stopped David here. It was the mercy of the Lord that was working for him, although he saw it as a disappointment. He took his troop, all his troop. They already were pitted to go into battle and fight against Israel. And then they said, Sorry, you cannot fight with us. So he was coming back with the disappointment of being rejected by the Philistines. He was traced to be killed by King Saul. He decided to become a Philistine, right? Now, he wants to go to fight against them to show his allegiance to them. I am no longer an Israelite. But he said, sorry, you can't fight with us. So he was disappointed. How can I be disappointed here? He was coming home with the disappointment of saying, you can't go with us to battle. You are not recognized as a Philistine. You are only part of God. Yes, you can help us to take care of the territory. But you can't go to war with us. And then he got home. Thinking, let me just get to my knees and rest and stay with my children and my wife. 
only to go home, to get home. And what happened? There is no, there is no longer still light. It's been burnt down. So can you even, can you understand why they cried so bad now? Because they moved from a point of disappointment to another disappointment. How can we be rejected not to go to war? And then we get to our home and we debate it. And they cried so bad. The Bible says, till they had no strength in them. Amen. So you can imagine this guy, this teenage man, from his teenage years. He enjoyed sudden fame. He enjoyed sudden glory. After defeating Goliath and becoming the royal instrumentalist, and then seeing some for the worst. I'm sure after he had defeated Goliath, after he became the royal instrumentalist, he would have been thinking, wow, I'm becoming great. I'm, be I'm, I'm, I'm fulfilling my destiny now. Things are working for me. And then the enemy started. King Saul started chasing him. Till he left the territory of Israelites to go and dwell among his enemies. Many of us, we are facing some challenges this day that is pushing us to go and dwell in the territory of the enemy. I pray the Lord will help us to keep standing and waiting for God in Jesus' name. He became a primitive. At least before he killed Goliath, he had a home, he had a family, he had the sheep he was taking care of. By the time he killed Goliath and then the enemy arose in Saul, he had to live in caves. He had to live in wilderness. He couldn't even have a place to stay because anyway, King Saul is going there to kill him. Can you imagine the state of mind of this man that knew God and could stand and tell Goliath, I am going to deal with you. The God that made me to overcome the lion and the bear is going to help me to overcome you. Can you imagine the faith this man had in God? And then this same man had to get to the point that he left the citizenship of Israelites and he decided to join with the Philistines. He was at the lowest part of low. I don't know how many of us are also in that point now. There was a time it seems we are going on, everything is working out, everything is going well, and then we crash landed. And we are wondering what is going on. And all we see ourselves doing these days is crying like David and his men, till we have no strength in us. Today God is sending us the word. He says, Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Amen. He was anointed by Prophet Samuel. You will be the next king of Israel. And we expect the anointing is just going to make things smooth for him. But can you imagine? Things did not become smooth eventually. It was as if him killing Goliath allowed the kingdom of darkness to unleash their anger against him. Some of us coming out of school, we got a very good grade. And it seems it unleashed the anger of the enemy against us. Some of us have said, oh, you will not get married. And then you get married. And then it unleashed the anger of the kingdom of that person against us. And it seems we won't have a child of our own. Some of us have said, you won't get a job, you got a job. But still, you are still fighting some battles that you can't even come out to say about, to talk about. David was at this point. It seemed as if the older he became, the bleaker it seemed like he's not going to be king any longer. I'm sure David thought about it at the point. Maybe that prophet Samuel was already having dementia, you know? He was old at that time. He was having senior, senior, senior dementia, that's what we call it. So it's not possible for God to have told him to anoint me. And then I become a committee. Uh -uh, it's not possible. It's not possible. There must be something wrong somewhere. I'm sure the prophet made a mistake. Some of us, we are looking at it. The word of God you wrote down, you went to look at it. I think it was my, my mind that was playing a trick on me. God would not have told me this word, and I'm going through this. God is saying, be encouraged. It doesn't matter where you are now. Judging by the life of David, are you living in cave now? Are you a fugitive now? Are you just with the 600 men? God said, God, be encouraged. Amen. But David was disappointed. David was discouraged. David was frustrated. He was feeling hopeless. He was feeling dejected. It seemed that God was not answering him. 
If you read some books of the Psalms, you see when you say, Oh God, when are you going to answer me? I've read some of those passages sometimes. You will see frustration. You will see, it's like, okay, I will wait. I will still wait, even though it seems it's not coming. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to, I'm not going to leave my faith. I know you are faithful. Even though it seems like it's not going to work out. God wants us to be encouraged. Do not lose your hope. Do not lose faith in him. He's still going to come true for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. So he started living as a freelance warrior. He was conquering neighboring lands and villages in order to survive and make sure that the 600 men in were well taken care of. Their family was well taken care of. And many times we also pass through unpleasant situations, despite God's promises, despite past victories, despite miracles, and it seems we have been abandoned by God. Do not allow the devil to take over your heart. Don't allow the devil to play tricks on you. Our God is faithful. And though it looks like that, everything, Bible says, it makes all things to work together for his good. Everything will come out for our good and we shall come out great in Jesus' name. Amen. So let us be careful. Do not join forces with the kingdom of darkness because that is what the devil wants us to do. You've been keeping yourself, you've been living a holy life, and still, things are not working out for you. The devil will convince you. Why don't you go to the world? Go to the ways of the world. See the people that are living in the world. They are enjoying themselves. They are doing whatever they want to do. They have money. Even if it's from a wrong means, they still have money. Why don't you go there? Do not let us allow the devil to lead us astray. First Samuel 27, verse 1 to 9. 1 Samuel chapter 27, verse 1 to 9. David in that passage says, But David thought to himself, One of these days I will be destroyed by the hand of Saul. The best thing I can do is to escape to the land of Philistine. I mean, of course, I also think in that way. They threaten us. We've gone through so many problems in life. And then we say, like David in 1 Samuel 27, verse 1, The best thing for me is to go back to the world. Any one of us that is at that point now, any one of us that the devil is making us to think that way, I pray the Lord will strengthen us. The Lord will encourage us in Jesus' name. We will not go back in Jesus' name. I want to assure us that God does not disappoint. Say to yourself, God will not disappoint me. It doesn't matter how it looks like. God does not disappoint. And it's going to come true for us in Jesus' name. Don't let me like that. David here. The Bible says he went to live in the camp of the enemy because the problem seems to be consistent. The problem seems not to stop. It's a stubborn for our destiny. When he goes into the cave, he saw God there. When he goes to the land, he saw God there. When he goes to the place, he saw God there. He saw was chasing after one person and left the will of God that has given unto him. There are some enemies like that. When you sleep, they are dead. When you wake up, they are dead. When you are doing this, they are dead. Even when you are rich, they are dead. When you don't have money, they are dead. When you don't have a job, they are dead. That's it. They are just on your case. I want to assure us that God that delivered David from the hand of King Saul eventually will deliver us from every storm of pursuit of our destiny in Jesus' name. In that first Samuel chapter 27, the latter part, the Bible says, Then David said to Achish, If I have found favor in your eyes, let the place be assigned to me in one of the country towns, that I may live there. Why should your servant live in the royal city with you? He was living in the land of Philistine. He became a citizen of Philistine. So on that day, Achish gave him Siglag, and it has belonged to the kings of Judah ever since. David lived in Philistine territory a year and four months. Now, one of the reasons why David and his men cried so much also is because of the way David operates when he goes out. The Bible says, Now David and his men went up and raided the Geshurites, the Geshites, and the Amalekites. From ancient times, these people had lived in the land extending to shore and Egypt. Whenever David attacked an area, let's listen to this part, he did not leave a man or woman alive. But two sheep and cattle, donkeys and camels and clothes, 
then they return to anguish. So whenever David goes out to raid this country, total annihilation, he kills all. Why? Because he doesn't even want Akish to know where he's going to raid. And that's why when they go to their camp, sit down, and they saw it raining, what do you think it's all about? They've been killed. My children have been killed. The wife has been killed. Because that is the same thing he was doing when he goes out to raid. That was why they, it was overwhelming for them to think the same thing they are doing to others has it happened to us. The same thing I've done. Sometimes when we're passing through situations, we think about it. I'm sure it's because of what I did 10 years ago. I'm sure it's because of that sin I committed. I'm sure it's because of that disobedience. I'm sure it's because of this. And sometimes we come to God, especially when we've gone to God and ask for mercy. God has forgiven us. But the devil will always come back and tell you, you are going through this problem because of what you've done. But let us know that there are many times a righteous can go through situations of life without you having done anything. We see example in the life of Job. Amen. We see example in the life of the man that was born blind. We even see examples when Jesus was being crucified. I'm sure many of them will say, look at this man that said he's a prophet. I'm sure he's a sinner. That's why he's going through this. But let us be encouraged, irrespective of whatever it is we are going through. As long as you are on the side of God, be rest assured that you are going to come out victorious in Jesus' name. So just like David, many of us have sought for alternatives. We've gone to the camp of the enemy. We have gone there because our challenges kept lingering. We have prayed. We have sought seed. We have fasted. We have waited on God. We are walking in his household. We have given our time. We have given our talent. We have given everything to him. But still nothing is working out. And now we are at a crossroad. Should I go to the Philistines? Should I still be an Israelite? Should I change my citizenship from being an Israelite and go and become a Philistine? I want to assure us, do not go back from the ways of the Lord. Irrespective of the pressure of life, irrespective of the challenges of life, do not go back from the ways of the Lord. Do not go back from following God. And I want to tell us that God is faithful. He will take us to where he has destined us to be in Jesus' name. David was so zealous for the Lord. So zealous for the Lord. So he felt personally insulted. <laughs> what do I say? He felt personally insulted when Goliath came against the people of the Lord. He went against Goliath. How can you say such against the people of God? When we read 1 Samuel chapter 17, he said, I'm going to cut off your head. I'm going to do this against you. And Goliath was wondering, who? You this rat, you this dog, you this small thing like this. Look at his zealousness for, for God. Look at his faith in God. So now imagine somebody like that having to turn back from being an Israelite to go and stay with the Philistines. The pressures of life, the challenges of life, it can also affect us too. But I want us to know that despite the challenges, Despite the difficulties of life, we can only get strength from somebody, and the person is who is God. Amen. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. In 1 Samuel 28, verse 1 to 2, in verse 2, David was even begging to go with them to war. David was begging, Let me go with you. Let me go with you to war. Let me go with you to do this. Let me go with you. You know, you see that these friends are ungodly. But because things are not working with you, they are the only ones you can get some money from, you can get support from. You go to them for help. Many of us are even begging for the alternatives, just like the prodigal son, begging for the food, food of the pigs. We are begging for the alternatives. Whatever it is that we are going through that has made us turn our back from God, I want to encourage us today. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and it shall strengthen your heart in Jesus' name. Amen. He posted about God in 1 Samuel 17 verse 26. He says, He had the men standing there by what will be done for the man who killed this Philistine and removed this disgrace from Israel. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that should defy the armies of the living God? 
And the same people he was calling on who had come fight for this thing, he went back to join them. Unbelievable. 1 Samuel 17, 32 to 37 says, David said to Saul, Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, You are not able to go out against the Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the floor, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from his mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its ear, struck it, and killed it. Can you see his boldness? Can you see his courage? Can you see the zealousness, his faith in God? This guy had strong faith in God. He was giving his testimonies. And many of us do we have so many testimonies we give people. This is what the Lord has done for me. See what the Lord has done for me. When I was this age, see what he did. In 2020, see what he did. In 2017, see what he did. In 2021, see what he did. And then in 2022, it seems as if the devil just unleashed all the demons in his kingdom against us. Stand and be encouraged. God is going to take us through in Jesus' name. He said, your servant has killed for the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defiled the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. This is a word of prophecy. And I want us to read it together. You're going to say to yourself, let's read that verse together. The Lord who rescued me I can't hear us reading. Let's read together. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Let's read again. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. I don't know the testimony of being rescued from the paw of the lion. Maybe a sickness. Maybe an accident. Maybe provision of job, maybe provision of accommodation. The Lord that has done that will do it again. Say he will do it again. He will do it again. Tell yourself he will do it again. I know. I know. I am sure he will do it again. Hallelujah. We need to be encouraged. See the faith of David here. Now, can you reconcile this same David? With the David of 1 Samuel 27, chapter 27 and chapter 28, David looks like the same man. It looks like he's a different man. How can a man stand and say, I know the God that's serving? And this same man became the person that was begging the enemies. Please let me join your army. Let me join your army. It didn't look the same. The difference was the challenge he was going through. The difference was the problem he was going through. The difference was, was because the problem was persistent. And he felt like, I have nowhere else to go. Let me turn on God. But we have a God that is merciful. We have a God that is merciful. In any way we've turned away, in any way we've become hopeless, in any way we are in our hearts, we are saying, I know God cannot do it. I want to assure us today again, be encouraged. God will do it. Say God will do it. Hallelujah. Amen. God is faithful. First Samuel 17, verse 45 to 47. You know, I've read these passages before, but when I was reading it again, I just saw the boldness of David. I want to marvel that his boldness. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with small and spare and jamming. Wait, we are talking about a teenager for God's sake. Speaking not just to an adult now. Speaking to a warrior. And not just any warrior. A giant. Somebody that will be like maybe times four or times whatever his height, his weight. No fear at all. He was telling me, I will cut your head. And how? With what? Look at this courage. And many of us are like that. In time past, somebody has told you, you can't do this. I say, my God can do it. I know my God can do it. I know the God I am serving. Now you get to a point that you say, I don't even know if this God is alive or not. 
We've gone back and said, uh -uh, I'm no longer serving this God. This God has failed me. Many of us have said, This God is sleeping. How can this God do this? This God is unfaithful. And the only reason we are still coming to church, the only reason we are still saying we are a Christian, is because you don't want people to talk. You just tell people when they say Christian, you raise up your hands, but in your heart, you have renounced him. You've left your citizenship, you've thrown your card against him, your passport, and no longer of your a citizen of your country, God. I now belong to myself and the world. He believed the worst had happened, but the worst had not happened, even when he was chased back, even when, when David and King Saul was chasing him. The worst happened when Ziglar was raided down, and his hope, their pride was raided, they became empty, and they cried till they had no strength any longer. One of these days I was doing a Bible study and I was just thinking, you know, in African context, I don't know in, um, in the wise, I know many times they said men don't cry. Isn't that right? They say men don't cry. But at the top of Lazarus, the Bible says Jesus cried. Is Jesus not a man? Many of the house answer me. Is Jesus not a man? <laughs> so if Jesus cried, why do we tell men don't cry? Even if you have a son that wants to cry, no, 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 don't cry, keep it in, keep it in. <laughs> don't cry, men don't cry. There's nothing like that. There are times that you are overwhelmed. I tell people, if you are overwhelmed, you can release it. You can cry. But when you're crying, it's not a cry of hopelessness. Cry and cry to God. Amen. This is the difference in what David did here. He said they cried till they had no strength. But then, the Bible did not say David was depressed. David did became depressed when the men he was with. The men he had been with for more than 365 days. The men he had been with for more than about 400 days. They've been together for more than a year. The Bible says they were planning to stone him. So there are times that you have support system. There are times that you have relatives and families around you that you believe they should understand what you are going through. They should be able to hold your hand. Even when people are asking you, do you have a support system? You say, yes, I have a support system. I have my friend. I have my spouse. I have my pastor. I have the church of God. Only for you to turn around and they are taking a knife to stab you. The men were going to stone David. He also lost his wife. He also lost his children. He also lost his things. But they didn't think about that. They were going to kill him. At that point, when you see that you don't have anyone to help you, at that point, when you see that you don't have a friend, you don't have a relative, you don't really have a support system, why don't you do like David? The Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. There was no one to encourage him. There was no friend to encourage him. Even the people that should be scattered, the warriors are going to war together. They turned their back against him. But he encouraged himself in the Lord. And then the next thing, he inquired of the Lord. Lord, what should I do? Should I run after them? Despite the fact that he was dejected, despite the fact that he was sad, despite the fact that he was discouraged, he did not look for another means. He knew the only way to go to his way is up. And that's why he said in Psalm 121, I will lift up my heart into the hills. Because looking at all these people surrounding me, ah, there is nothing they can do for me. There is no support from them. But I will lift up my heart onto the hills. From where is God is my help? My help is not from these people. I think these people don't even want me. My help comes from who? From God, who makes heaven and earth. How many of us we say like David today? I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. Because our support system has failed. There is no support. It's like you trying to sit down, you are tired, you are coming from the stairs. You saw a chair close by and you want to sit down, only to find out it has three legs. What happens? You fall. And then the tiredness you came up with is not even going to be as much as the pain of falling. Many times we think we have support system, but the support system are not there. The only support that we can have 
every season, in winter, in summer, in spring, at, in rainy time, sunny time, is God. Psalm 91 says, He that dwell under the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, You are my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. He shall deliver me from the foulest snare. He's the only one that can deliver. Our support system can fail. We've seen many cases of a man becoming sick and the wife failed him. Example is in the Bible. Job. How can Job be passing through issues and his wife say, Cause God. Oh God. Cause God and die. You are not the one with the sickness. Who is supposed to be cleaning his wound for him? Who is supposed to be encouraging him? Cause your God and die. Our relatives can say that to us. Oh, you don't have a child all these years. It's because you are a witch. Oh, I know. See, my brother was doing well before that woman married him. My sister was doing well before she married that man. That man destroyed her life. Or you can even lose your job as a woman and come to my husband and say, sorry, there is nothing I can do to help you. But there is a God that is always there for us. Amen. I pray the Lord will help us to always look up to him in Jesus' name. David would have given over to this man and lose hope completely because he has lost everything. He lost his family, he lost his dignity, and then he lost his friends. He lost his relatives. He lost people that could be like his body body. They were going to kill him. Come on. He also lost his family. But they didn't care. But he said he found his strength in the Lord. We're just going to pray. Before I say the few more points. Father, at every point I am depressed. At every point I am discouraged. Help me to find my strength in you. Help me to find my strength in you. In every point I am discouraged. Father, help me not to always find my strength in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's remember, even when everybody has turned their backs on us, God is always with us. He says, when you pass through the fire, I'll be with you. When you pass through the water, I am there with you. When you pass through the river, there are some issues in life that will be like the river, that will be like the water, that will be like the fire. He says, I am there with you. Amen. Psalm 34, verse 4 to 8. Those are some of the signs of David. He says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. That is what we can do. Call unto the Lord and he will save us, he will rescue us in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah 41 verse 10 to 13. We can write it down. Isaiah 41 verse 10 to 13 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Do not fear. Even when things are going on, that is fearful. God is telling us today, do not fear. I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will rescue you. The God of the universe is giving you the assurance again. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Why don't you trust in him? Don't go back to the world. Don't turn your back against him. Because look at the people he turned his back against the Israelites for. Look at the people he believed were his people. They turned their back against him as well. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So when you are discouraged, when you are in despair, I want us to um, focus on Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. He says, Do not be anxious. Do not be anxious in everything by prayer and supplication. Make your what? Make your request known to God. Amen. Are we there? All right. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all the Lord is there. Verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about what? Did he say some things? Anything. No matter what it is. 
Is it your health? Don't be anxious. Is it your children? Don't be anxious. Is it your business? Don't be anxious. Is it your uh, education? Don't be anxious. Don't be anxious about anything. But instead of anxiety, what should we do? But in every situation, by prayer and petition, we thank him. So three things he gave us then to overcome despair, to overcome anxiety. One, do not be anxious. Don't be. But when the situation comes, what do you do? Prayer and petition to God. With what? Then given. You tell yourself, do not be anxious. God is in control. And then you do what? You pray about it. You see the face of the Lord about it. Then you thank him because he will do it. Even when you don't see the hand, keep thanking him. Keep thanking him. Keep telling yourself, don't be discouraged. God will do it. And I pray he will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So when you see the face of God, do not seek it with anxiety. Don't seek it with fear. Because our God is a faithful God. He said in Romans 8 that we know all things work together for good. All things we work together for good or to God in Jesus' name. Let's be on our feet as we read the last passage together. Revelation 21, verse 4. Please let's go to the place or you can project it for us. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. I read it for them, read it together. It says, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling is now among the people. Revelation 21, verse 3 to 4. And he will dwell with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Say amen. Amen. So I want us to personalize it. Say to yourself, this verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from my eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, amen. neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Two more times we are saying to ourselves again. And God shall wipe away all tears from my eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away for the last time. And God shall wipe away all tears from my eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Let me get you this passage to pray, Father, according to your word. I am encouraged this morning, and I decree there shall be no, we will wipe away all tears from my eyes, in the name of Jesus, there shall be no more tears, I shall no longer mourn, you will turn my mourning into dancing, in the name of Jesus, you will give me beauty for action, in the name of Jesus, you will give me garments of dancing for garments of mourning, in the name of Jesus, I decree by your mercy, Lord, I am encouraged, I am not discouraged, I receive strength from above, I receive strength from above, in the name of Jesus, I decree by your mercy, Lord, all things that are working for me, all things that are working for us, in the name of Jesus, all things that are working for us, in the name of Jesus, I am encouraged. I shall not go back to the world. I shall not go back to the world. I shall not go back to the world. Thank you, Jesus, for being encouraged. In Jesus' name we pray.